In this tutorial, I will show you how to texture bake metallic maps. Now, if you'd like to learn the basics of texture baking in Blender, then definitely check out my texture baking for beginners tutorial. Link is in the description. And you can also check out my texture baking tutorial playlist to watch more of my texture baking tutorials. And I'm going to be baking my procedural rusty metal material. And I have a tutorial on how to create this. So link will be in the description if you'd like to check that out. So the first thing that we need to do is add an image that we can bake to. So I have the shader editor right here, and I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go here to the search, and I'm going to search for an image texture, and we're going to put the image texture above the principled shader. And then we need to make a new image that we can actually bake to. So I'm going to click on the new button, and then let's rename this, and I'm going to rename this to Metal Metallic. Now on the width and height here, I want this to be a 4K texture, so I'm going to click and then drag down and then let go and this way I can change both values at the same time and I'm going to type in 4096 and then hit enter and this is the standard resolution for a 4k texture but of course you can set the resolution to whatever you want and then it doesn't matter what color we use because the texture baking is going to bake over the top of the color and then I can click on ok so here is the texture that we're going to bake to now something that's really important is to make sure that the color space here is set to non color and that is because this is a metallic map and so it's not contributing to the base color of the material we're going to be putting it into the metallic value after we've baked it so because it's not contributing to the base color we want the color space here to be set to non color all right so the next thing that we need to do is uv unwrap the object so i'm going to click on the plus right up here and i'm going to click on general and i'm going to add a uv editing layout because i don't have a uv editing layout all right, and then I'm going to press the A key to select the entire object. And then for an object like this, I'm just going to press U to unwrap. And then I'm going to click on Smart UV Project. And then right here on the island margin, I do want a little bit of space between the islands to make sure there isn't any overlapping. So I'm going to turn the island margin to a 0 0.001 and then click on OK. And this UV unwrap will be fine for texture baking. The most important things are to make sure there isn't any overlapping of the islands. And then also you want to make sure that these islands aren't going out of the image texture. And if you'd like to learn the basics of UV unwrapping in Blender, then you can check out my UV unwrapping for beginners tutorial with the link in the description. And in my beginner texture baking tutorial, I go a little bit more in depth about UV unwrapping your objects for texture baking. But just make sure you have a decent UV unwrap. So I'm going to click right back over here on the shading workspace. All right, so we can now go over the bake settings. So I'm going to click right up here to go to the render properties. Now for texture baking, you need to make sure that you're using the cycles rendering engine because baking isn't supported in Blender Eevee. Now, if you are using Blender Eevee in your scene, that is totally fine. You just need to change it to cycles. Then you can do the baking. And then once the baking is finished, you can change it back to Blender Eevee. But while you're baking textures, you do need to set this to cycles. So now I'm going to click right here on the sampling arrow. Just click on this to open it up and I'm going to open up the render samples. So Blender actually uses the render samples for baking. So if you turn the samples down, it'll bake much faster. So I'm just going to turn the samples to 10 and that won't affect the quality of the bake. So you can just turn the samples way down. And then I'm going to close these arrows here and I want to open up the baking tab. And again, make sure you're in the cycles rendering engine because if you are in Blender Eevee, then you're not going to see this baking tab. So right here there is a bake type and if you click on this you can choose between what you want to bake. So there is normal, there's also roughness, and there's also diffuse and the diffuse is color but you can see that there actually isn't any metallic value. So we don't really have any way to bake the metallic value which is going into the shader. So to bake the metallic values I'm going to be using the emission instead. So you can click on the emit that is short for emission. And then I'm also going to be using the node wrangler add on. So if you don't have the Node Wrangler enabled, you can click here on Edit and you can open up the Preferences. And then in Blender's User Preferences, you can click over on the Add-ons tab. And over here on the Search, you can just search for Node Wrangler and just check mark the Node Wrangler add-on. And we're going to use this to bake the metallic values. And then you can just close the User Preferences. So now that the Node Wrangler add-on is enabled, I can hold down the Control and Shift key and then I can select different nodes. And that is going to preview the node on 
on the object. And make sure you are in the rendered mode in the 3D viewport when you're doing this. So how the node wrangler works is whatever you control shift and select, it's basically going to turn that into an emission shader. If you control shift and select a shader like this shader here, it's just going to use the properties of the shader. But if I, for instance, control shift and select this mix RGB here, it's basically pretending that this is an emission. And so it's emitting the light that it's previewing from the mix RGB. And why this will help us for baking the metallic values is because we can preview what the metallic values are. And then when we bake this, because we're baking the emission, it's actually going to bake what the node wrangler is previewing. And in earlier versions of Blender, there actually was this little viewer node that would come up. And if you open it up, it actually had an emission value. So it was basically an emission shader. But in the newer version of Blender, they got rid of it, but it still works exactly the same. So for this procedural material, this Musgrave texture, the height value is going into the metallic. So I'm going to control shift and select the Musgrave texture, and that is the metallic values. Now it might be with your material that you're not actually using a texture in the metallic value. If I just hold down the shift key and right click and drag over this wire and let go, that's going to add a reroute, and then I can just unplug this wire. So your material might be set up like this, where you have a single metallic value and it's turned all the way up to one, so it's completely metallic. If I control shift and select the principal shader, here you can see because I've turned the metallic all the way to one, the entire material is metal. But because this is a rusty metal, I don't really want the rust to look metallic. So that's why I am putting the Musgrave texture into the metallic so that some parts are more metallic and other parts are less metallic. And if I turn the metallic value all the way to zero, now none of the material is metallic. So if you are using any single metallic value, then you can just add a single color value and then you can bake that color value. So to do this, you can press Shift A, you can go here to the search, and you can search for the RGB. And I could actually put the color here into the metallic value, and then this is going to control the metallic value. So if you turn the color up to completely white, it's going to be completely metallic. If you turn the value completely to zero, it's not going to be metallic at all. And then there's going to be all in between. So right here in the very center, that's going to be like half metallic. So it is a little bit metallic, but not fully metallic. So if your material is fully metallic, you can just turn the RGB value up to fully white. And then because we're baking the emission, you want to control shift and select the RGB to preview it. And then you can bake this and it'll bake fully white. And then that way it'll be fully metal. But in this case, I'm using a texture. So I'm going to delete this and I can just plug this back up here and then this Musgrave texture is going into the metallic value so to preview this I'm going to control shift and select the Musgrave texture so that is my metallic map so then before we actually bake this you need to make sure the object is selected because that way we're telling blender that that is the object that we want to bake and then also what's really important is to make sure the image texture is selected and by selecting this image texture we're telling blender that that's the image that we want to bake to and also on the color space here again make sure this is non-color because it's not contributing to the base color and then before we bake this i do want to preview what the bake looks like so i'm going to hover my mouse right up here when the crosshair appears and i can click and drag down and that's going to split the window. And then I want to change this to the image editor. So if you click right here to change the editor type, I can change this to the image editor. And then right here on the drop down, if it isn't already selected, you can select the image, this image here. So again, make sure this object is selected. Make sure this image here is selected. And over here on the bake settings, we set the bake type to emit. And so we can now hit the bake button right here. And it shouldn't take very long. You can say there's a loading bar. It will depend on the power of your computer. So if you have a powerful computer then it will bake pretty fast and there we go so it finished baking and so you can see because I control shift and selected the Musgrave texture it's previewing the metallic value and so here we have the metallic map so now we need to save this image to a file on our computer so I'm going to click right up here on image and then I'm going to click on save as and I'm going to save this metal metallic and I will just save this as a PNG image and then I can click on save as all right, so we've now saved this image to a file on our computer. So if we close Blender, Blender won't lose the file data. So we can now plug the image texture into the metallic value and we don't need to use the procedural texture anymore. So I'm going to take the color right here and I'm going to stick this into the metallic value. And right here on the color space, you can see this is set to non-color and that's what we want. And then I can just control shift and select the principal shader. And there we have it. So we are now using the baked image texture. And so you can see these parts right here look very metallic, but then where it's rusty, it looks less metallic.
Now there is one more important thing that I wanted to mention in this video. If you are trying to texture bake a color map of any material which is using metallic values, then when you actually bake it, any areas which are metallic are going to be very dark and it's going to mess up the color. And just to show you real quick, I'm going to take the bake type here and I'm going to turn this to diffuse. That is going to bake the color. And then I also want to turn off the direct and indirect because that's going to actually bake the lighting which is shining on the object, but I just want to bake the color. And then I can also press shift A go to the search here and I'm going to search for another image texture. I can click on new to add a new image texture and I can just call this color and I'll just bake it as 4k and click on ok. So then make sure the object is selected and make sure this image is selected. This is set to diffuse and I can click on bake and it finished baking but you can see here is the problem any areas which are metallic it is very dark colored and if your metallic value was fully set to one and you bake this because everything is metallic it would be fully black in my case there are just these little black areas but that's not true to the actual material because if i control shift and select this mix right here this is what the color map should look like so if you are baking a color map of any material which is using a metallic value you first need to un plug any metallic values and you need to turn the metallic value to zero and then of course I need to control shift and select the principal shader and then make sure this object is selected and make sure that this color is selected and then I'm just going to bake this again just to show you and you can see the color map has finished baking but this time it actually looks correct there aren't those little dark areas so then you could click on image and you could just save this image and then once the color map is baked you could turn the metallic value back up to one or if you had a texture that was going into the metallic value, you could plug this up. So basically what you want to do is turn the metallic value to zero, then you can bake the color map, and then once that's done, you can turn the metallic value back up. So I hope you found this helpful, and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to learn the basics of texture baking in Blender, then definitely check out my texture baking for beginners tutorial with the link in the description. And if you'd like to learn more about texture baking in Blender, then definitely check out my texture baking tutorial playlist with the link in the description. And if you enjoy these videos and you'd like to help support this channel, I will have links in the description to my Gumroad store and my Patreon page and the YouTube memberships. Those are all great ways to help support this channel, and I do appreciate your support. But I hope this video was helpful and thank you for watching.